All right, welcome back. In this video, we're going to continue learning HMI. We'll see what are trend view, data logging, internal tags, and how we can see an internet page on the HMI screen. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content I have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Alright, let me show you, what we're going to do. When there are many HMI screens, we don't have to use a button to open each screen. We'll see how HMI memory can be used to create this list. HMI memory can be used to create this list. On the tank screen, we'll use a trend view, to see the liquid level diagram, page on the HMI screen. First, let me show you what are these. When there are many HMI screens, we don't have to use a button to open each screen. We'll see how HMI memory can be used to create this list. On the tank screen, we'll use a trend view, to see the liquid level diagram. Also, we can store this or other parameters, with data logging ability. It makes to store industrial process parameter in an external source. We can store this or other parameters, with data logging ability. It makes to store industrial process parameter in an external source. Finally, we'll use HTML browser on the HMI. Let's start, with this screen of the previous video. Let me insert a trend view from the right list. Like other elements, in the properties window, we can change its settings. Here, we can define new trends. The main part, is this column, to determine its connected tag. Let me select this tag which stores the liquid level. The cyclic time is a periodic time, which the trend reads and shows the selected tag value. Also, we can change other settings, like its trend data type, or its range. Here, we can change the trend style like its color. Let's go to its time axis, and change it to 10 seconds. Now, let's see what this trend does. Well, to start filling, I need an account. We have created them in the previous video. As you see, on the left side, we can see the tank level changing diagram, and also its connected tag name. Let me go to the trend properties window, and remove its below table. Let's test it again.
Now, instead of the previous table, I can magnify the trend view or stop that. Alright, let's see how we can store an industrial process parameter, like the liquid level, on our computer, or on external memory. From the left window, select historical data. Let's specify a name for the new data log. Then we can change its settings like the output format, the number of data records to be logged in each data log, the paths where the log entries are saved, or check this box, to start data logging automatically. Also, select the restart behavior of the log, in this column, to keep or reset previous data log. Here, we must determine data, whose value should be logged. First, I want to record tank level liquid. Then, its PLC tag must be entered. We can determine the logging cycle time. Also, define its lower and upper bounds, and select its logging's limit range. Naturally, we can log more than one parameter. Now, let's test the designed HMI. Let's select the automatic mode and enter 90%. Then, the fill valve will be open until the liquid level reaches the desired value. During this simulation, the HMI stores the liquid level, and the fill valve state, on drive C of my computer. Here, in this file. As you see, two PLC tags value, are recording here every 5 seconds. Well, to see updated data, this file must be closed and opened again. Data logging is used to have backup, of the industrial process information. The designed HMI can be improved, like this screen. Here, the data logging can be started, stopped, and cleared manually. Let's see, how this HMI screen has been designed. First, I have created a new screen, and used a trend view. The main part is three inserted buttons, which are using suitable functions in their events tab. For the start button, I have selected start logging function. For the next button, the stop logging function is used. And the third button uses clear log function. Finally, here we have a simple circle to show data logging state. The circle is connected to this tag, logging LED. If its value switch to 1, then start flashing. The logging LED value is changed by start and stop logging button. As you see, this button does two works. When it is pressed, data logging will be started, and also the logging LED is set to 1. The next button, stops data logging, and also reset this tag. Here is a question, where is the logging LED tag defined? Like previous videos, we can use a bit of PLC memory, but here, the HMI memory can be used too. Let's go to the HMI tags table. Here, we can see all connected tags, which have been defined before. These tags can be addresses of a connected PLC, or use the HMI memory.
Here, the logging LED tag is defined, and the internal tag is selected for that. So this tag uses the HMI memory. Let me show you another example of using internal memory. Let's define an internal tag, which its data type is integer to store numbers like 1, 2, 3. Now, let's go to the main screen. Here, I have inserted another button, to open the trend and logging screen, which we have seen it before. Now, we're going to use an I.O. field element, instead of using a button to open each screen. In the inserted element properties, I use the defined internal tag. Also I use a text list, which has been defined before. This text list, has three choices, related to three screens. Pay attention, if you see each screen properties, you will see, each screen has a unique number like 1, 2, 3, which has been used here. Now, in the event tab of the inserted I.O. field, select change, and then, select this function, activate screen by number. Now, connect this function to the defined internal tag. Let's copy this I.O. field, in other screens. So, when we use this I.O. field to change its connected text list, the number which is stored in the connected internal tag, will be changed too. Also, we have used a function, to select and open screens, based on the number which is stored in the defined internal tag. Now let's test the HMI screens. As you see, I can change the HMI screen, with this list. Let's define another screen, to use HTML browser on the HMI. Now, we don't need to use a button, to open this screen. As you see, this screen number is 4. We just need to modify the text list, which is used in this I.O. field. So let's go to text and graphic lists. Here I define the fourth screen. Now, let me copy the I.O. field and paste it to new screen. Also, let me use HTML browsers in this screen. So, if the HMI is connected to internet, we can see this internet address on the HMI. Let me change this address. Let's test this screen. As you see, I can go to the new screen with this list. Also, I can see the inserted internet address. Let me search PLC Goods website on the HMI.
Similarly, if you have real PLC and HMI, you will able to test your programs like me. When I activate data logging, its data will be stored in the HMI memory. Alright, in the next video, we'll start to learn different system controls, which are usually used for industrial processes. After that, we continue learning control menu items like recipes and alarms views. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.